The Ground Zero for today, where we trust in God for a word from within the word defined by the truth. And the truth is the word of God. And it's Philippians 1 and it's verse 27. Only be sure as citizens so to conduct yourselves that your manner of life will be worthy of the good news, the gospel of Christ. So whatever I do, come and see you. Uh, okay, so what? So that whether I do come and see you or I am absent, I may hear this of you, that you are standing firm in united spirit and purpose, striving side by side and contending with a single mind for the faith of the glad tidings of the gospel. Amazing story. My son, when he was um, young, round about, I think it was about five, six years old, hanging out with a friend, and then we're taking a walk down the road, and they were going to cross over the one road into the park. And the friend said, let's go. And my son said, no. Casey said, I'm not going to do it. And the friend said, why not? Well, my father said, I can walk as far, far as this road and not cross over. And his friend said, but your, your father's not here. He said, yes, but I'm here. And I know what my father would need from me, and I'm not going to break his trust in me. And that was quite amazing as that young little boy, understanding that even though I was not around, he was still representing me. And that was absolutely fantastic. And here it is. Only be sure as citizens so to conduct yourselves that your manner of life will be worthy of the good news of the gospel of Christ. And that's one of the main things that we do to display the gospel of Christ, that the good news and what is the gospel, that he is the son of God that was sent to save us from our sins. And in him is everlasting life. There's freedom, there's safety, and conduct your life as a person who lives like that has really happened. And I can remember that friend of mine who was on stage, praise and worship, and everybody was really, really enjoying it. And after church, he came and he said, you know what, uh, I really, really enjoyed the praise and worship. And I just remembered him standing there, not even moving. He had his one hand in the air and he was rocking slightly from side to side, no expression or anything. And yeah, he's telling me that he was really enjoying it. I said, the next time, let your face know. Because nobody could see, well, they're not making good representation of what Jesus Christ has actually done for you. Is our life living as an example that people will look upon us and they will praise God? Do they want what you and I have? Or do they rather say, not for me, I'm going to find it somewhere else? Verse 28, and do not for a moment be frightened or intimidated in anything by your opponents. Ha. Come on, Lord, where's my Jesus? Who said that this deal brings anything where there's opponents? Well, guys, you're on a battlefield. You're fighting the good fight. Life doesn't get better. You get better. Of course, there are people that are going to oppose you, that are going to be your adversaries. They do know what they want the goodness of God to come out of you. They're going to stop it. They want to beat you down. There's a story of a little boy walking on the beach and there's this guy with two buckets and there's this one bucket and he's fishing and it's full of crabs and the lid is open and there's like at least 50, 60 crabs in there. And the little boy says, and the bucket next to it with the lid on, uh, what's in there? And the guy opens the lid and he says, no, it's also crabs. He says, but there's only one. He said, yeah. He said, but why is it that you have no lid when there's lots of crabs? And there's a lid on when there's one crab. He says, well, if you leave one crab on its own, it's going to climb out of the bucket. So you have to put a lid on. And he said, and not for, well, when there's lots of crabs, everyone is trying to climb out like that one, but all the other crabs keep on pulling them down. So I don't need a lid. And that's quite a deep breath. How many people do you have in your life that are actually pulling you down, that are stopping you from being who you really are? And do not for a moment be frightened or intimidated in anything 
by your opponents and adversaries. For such fearlessness will be a clear sign, proof, and seal to them of their impending des destruction. Be a sure token and evidence of your deliverance and salvation and that from God. How powerful is that? That what it's saying is, if you are living as an example of somebody who has been delivered by the Lord Jesus Christ, who walks in and carries salvation, your adversaries will look upon you and they will see the clear proof that whatever they do to you, whatever they try to accomplish in your life, they will not be able to withstand you. Isn't that amazing? Verse 28, and do not for a moment be frightened or intimidated in anything by your opponents and adversaries, for such fearlessness will be a clear sign, proof and seal to them of the impending destruction. Be a sure token and evidence of your deliverance and salvation and that from God. Guys, you have been delivered we have salvation and we live the life that every adversary and opponent, the enemy will look upon you and know, doesn't matter how much I try, no matter how much I push, I will be destroyed. It's impending. It's inevitable. They cannot and will not win when they look upon you living a life that is a true manifestation of Jesus Christ dying on the cross for you and I, that freedom, that untouchableness, knowing that it doesn't matter what adversity you go through, life doesn't get better, you get better, all things will turn out for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. You are that person. You are the living, walking example of that peace, joy, determination, patience. That's you and that is I. And the enemy will just realize it's not worth it. They will let you alone. And maybe that's it. It's time for us to turn around and say, you know what? If there's one way I'm going to get rid of my adversaries, I am going to live as that example. I am what I am. You see, it's not who you are. It's whose you are. Live a life that they can see who you belong to. And you know what the Lord will say on your behalf? You can't touch this. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your goodness. Oh, my goodness. We are a clear sign and proof and seal to our adversaries of their impending destruction because we are a sure token and clear evidence of being delivered and saved. And that comes from God himself. Father, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen.